how do you overclock an NVIDIA GPU? In this video, we are going to find out. My name is Matt, I'm a former rocket scientist, and my goal is to help you make the right component choices and put them together the right way every single time. In the It's Not Rocket Science series, we've been helping you troubleshoot and optimize your system to keep your PC running like a pro. It's not rocket science, and as you'll see throughout this series, it really is Lego. A question I see a lot of enthusiasts and gamers ask is how do I extract more performance from my GPU? With the crazy prices of new GPUs, I'm sure that many of you have decided to stick with your current card for a little longer and as a result are trying to find ways to extract more FPS from it. For NVIDIA GPUs it's actually quite easy to do but you will need to use a third party tool like MSI Afterburner and you will need to be careful not to push it too far. But don't worry, in this video I'll provide you with a step-by-step -step guide on how to overclock your GPU the right way, allowing you to increase performance without impacting stability. The test system that I'm using for this video is my AMD AM5 open bench table with the following components. For the CPU, we have an AMD Ryzen 7 9800X 3D. For the motherboard, we have an ASUS ROG Crosshair X870E Hero. For RAM, we have G-Skill Ripjaws M5 Neo RGB 32GB of DDR5 6000 at CL26. For the GPU, we have an MSI GeForce RTX 5070 Ti Ventus 3X OC. For the CPU cooler, we have an ASUS ROG Ryo 3 360mm AIO. For storage, we have a 4TB Samsung 990 Pro NVMe Gen 4 M.2 SSD. And for the PSU, we have a Corsair HX 1200i Platinum 1200W power supply. Affiliate links for all of these components are listed in the description below. You can overclock an NVIDIA GeForce GPU different ways and with different tools. The process that I'll walk you through in this video is a robust approach that I've developed and modified over a long period of time to not only ensure that you achieve a max overclock, but more importantly, that you achieve stable performance. Given that software control of overvoltage has been significantly limited in modern GPUs, there is essentially no way to damage your card using this approach, so it's something I would encourage you to try. One important point to understand before attempting to overclock your GPU is that your results will vary based on the quality of your silicon. Some people will get lucky and get a golden sample chip that can overclock extremely well, and some will get unlucky and see only minor results from overclocking. This is called the silicon lottery because the silicon quality you get when buying a CPU or GPU is essentially a roll of the dice. That said, you'll never know unless you give it a shot. You will first need to download software to adjust the power, voltage, boost clock and memory clock, the primary parameters that need to be adjusted to overclock your GPU. For NVIDIA GPUs, you will need to use third-party software such as MSI Afterburner because the NVIDIA app does not yet offer manual tuning control. The primary software that I use to manually tune NVIDIA GPUs is GPU Tweak 3 from ASUS, which has become my favorite GPU overclocking tool because it's easy to use and offers all of the tuning options you need. Before tuning any component, you should benchmark it at default power, voltage and clock settings to establish a baseline. Since this is a GPU, I use 3 d Mark Speedway, Port Royal and Steel Nomad as my primary benchmarking tools. Once you've established a baseline and recorded your benchmark scores, you can then proceed to the next step. Now for the fun part. This is a trial and error process. It's simple, but you need to be patient and take relatively small steps. The first thing you should do is go to settings in GPU Tweak 3 and make sure that start with Windows and apply previous settings on program startup are selected. Then hit save. You can then increase the power target slider to the max. For my 5070Ti, the default factory settings already has the slider all the way to the right, which is a change from when the card was first released. Hit apply and then rerun one of your baseline benchmarks to see what impact the increased power has on performance. I typically use Steel Nomad as my primary GPU benchmarking tool because I've found that it tests a GPU much more thoroughly than other synthetic benchmarks. For the purpose of this tutorial, I also left fan speed on auto. If your temperatures get too high, then this is something you should adjust to improve cooling. The next parameter you should adjust for a GeForce GPU is the GPU voltage. If you're using MSI Afterburner, you will first need to tick unlock voltage control in the settings, but for GPU Tweak 3, it's enabled by default. I typically start by increasing the voltage in increments of 20%, rerunning the benchmark and recording my score. Make sure to hit apply after each voltage adjustment. The objective is to find a voltage where the performance is highest so you will likely need to iterate in smaller increments to find exactly where the peak is. For my 5070Ti, this peak was around 60%. It's important to keep in mind that this peak is at the default GPU boost and memory clocks. It will change when you start to overclock and your card becomes voltage limited. 
To check whether power or voltage is limiting your card's performance, you can run GPU-Z and in the default menu, select the Sensors tab at the top. If you scroll down while running an application or game, you will see a parameter called Perf Cap Reason, which will tell you if your performance is being limited by power or if it's being limited by voltage. If it's being limited by voltage, then increasing the GPU voltage will help. However, if it's being limited by power, then increasing the voltage could reduce your performance. When you start overclocking, your performance will likely become voltage limited, especially for higher end cards. So you will typically want to max the voltage slider to achieve max performance. You can now proceed to overclock your GPU. I typically adjust the GPU boost clock first, but whatever you do, don't change both clocks at the same time. You can adjust the boost clock in GPU Tweak 3 by increasing the GPU boost clock slider. I usually start by increasing this in increments of plus 50 megahertz. Your objective is to find a peak in performance or a stability limit, which is the point at which your benchmark hangs or returns an error. If it does, then back off to your last stable overclock and try increasing it in smaller increments, say plus 25 megahertz, until you get another error or your score decreases. At this point, back off to your last stable overclock, hit apply, and this is your max GPU boost clock. For my 5070Ti, I found that a boost clock increase of 400MHz offered the best balance of performance and stability. With a max frequency offset applied, I then focus on finding a max memory overclock. You can adjust the memory overclock speed in ASUS GPU Tweak 3 by increasing the memory clock slider or in MSI Afterburner by increasing the mem megahertz slider. One important thing to be aware of when adjusting memory clocks is the difference between memory clock speed and effective memory clock speed. The memory clock speed, typically measured in megahertz, refers to the frequency at which the memory controller is cycling data, whereas the effective memory clock speed, typically measured in gigabits per second, is the actual rate at which data is being transferred. The reason this is important is that the memory clock slider in ASUS GPU Tweak 3 allows you to change the effective memory clock speed, whereas in MSI Afterburner, the slider adjusts the actual memory clock speed. So for an RTX 5070 Ti with GDDR7 memory, a plus 100 MHz adjustment in MSI Afterburner will be equivalent to a plus 1600 mega transfer per second adjustment in GPU Tweak 3. As a result, if you're using Afterburner and try to input an overclock from GPU Tweak 3, you will very likely crash your system. One additional thing to note is that GPU Tweak 3 currently shows the effective memory clock in megahertz, which is not technically correct since it's a data rate. It should be listed as mega transfers per second or gigabits per second. To find a max memory overclock, I typically start by increasing the slider by increments of around 250 mega transfers per second. Again, your objective is to find a performance peak or stability limit. When your benchmark returns an error or your score starts to decrease, back off to your last overclock and try increasing it in small increments, say plus 50 mega transfers per second. When you are looking at data like this, it can help a lot to plot the data visually, so it becomes clear when you reach peak in performance. Once you do find a peak or stability limit, dial it in, hit apply changes, and this is your max GPU VRAM frequency. For my MSI RTX 5070 Ti Ventus 3X, I found an increase of approximately 1050 mega transfers per second gave me max performance in Steel Nomad. With my GPU and memory overclocks now set, I then run the other 3DMark GPU benchmarks and test around the overclock in small increments, just to make sure I'm extracting every ounce of performance that I can. Sometimes, by backing off a little on your overclock, you can achieve a higher score. When that happens, it means you pushed a little too far and are on the edge of stability. Step 5. Check Stability Congratulations, you've successfully extracted more free performance from your GPU. The final step is all about making sure that your overclock is stable. But what does stable actually mean? This can vary based on your needs. Some people think successfully booting into Windows is stable enough. But to me, stable means that your GPU will function without any issues, regardless of what programs you run. So the final test that I implement to ensure stability is to run Fermark for around 60 minutes. You can watch the GPU temp in real time and see if your system freezes at any point during the test. If it passes and your temperatures are reasonable, then your GPU overclock should be stable. That said, there's no guarantee that over time an overclock that was stable doesn't become unstable. But if that ever happens, you can simply go back to your default settings and follow this process again. Something I typically do once I discover my stable overclock is to purposely back off a little to ensure that I stay away from the stability edge. That will give you some room for thermal paste deterioration and avoid having to go through this process again in the future. 
You can even rerun some of your benchmarks to see just how much backing off a little reduces your performance. More than likely, it will not be meaningful. A bonus tip and something I always do after overclocking is to open a command prompt by typing CMD in search, right clicking on it and selecting run as administrator and running the FSC slash scan now command. This should find and repair any corrupt files on your PC that may have been generated during the overclocking process. Once you've established a stable overclock, you can rerun your benchmarks to see just how much of an impact the overclock has on performance. For my MSI GeForce RTX 5070 Ti Ventus 3X OC, I decided to also run the automatic tuning option in the Nvidia app. You can find the automatic tuning feature in the performance tab under the system menu. It takes about 30 minutes to run and resulted in a GPU boost clock of 80 megahertz and memory clock boost of 200 megahertz, which is good. Keep in mind that the Ventus 3X OC has a slightly higher boost clock when compared against the 5070 Ti reference spec. So this boost is on top of that. As you can see from the results, the performance impact when using the automatic overclock option is quite good with a roughly 6% increase in scores. This increase in performance also comes with a 10 watt increase in power, so it's an easy way to get a quick boost in performance. However, when you now look at the max overclock, you can see just how beneficial it is to spend some time manually tuning your GPU, with increases of around 13%. You will see a 10 to 20 watt increase in power, but the temperatures remain similar, which is great. Your results will vary based on silicon quality and cooling solution, but based on these results, it's clearly worth spending some time to find a stable overclock. Whenever I overclock a GPU, I use 3D Max Steel Nomad as my primary surrogate for games. I do this because there is less variability with a synthetic benchmark, it's consistent and repeatable, and it uses a similar graphics engine as modern games, so it tests the GPU in very similar ways. Even though it's effectively a non-playable game, I always get a few people in the comments who claim that the performance increases in 3D Mark do not reflect real world gaming and that the performance in games will be less. To see if that's true, I tested five popular games and I compared the performance at default settings with the auto and max overclocks. As you can see from Total War Warhammer 3, the performance increases are almost identical to the 3D Mark results, with average increases of 5.5% for the auto overclock and 13.1% for the max overclock. In fact, when you look at most of the games I tested, you see very similar trends, with average increases of 7.6 and 14.5% in Microsoft Flight Simulator, 5.3 and 13.3% in Call of Duty Black Ops 6, and 5.7 and 14% in Monster Hunter Wilds. The only game that I tested that didn't match this trend was Cyberpunk 2077 and only for the auto overclock, which showed a large 20% decrease in average FPS. The max overclock was however on trend with a 13.8% increase. So the notion that 3D Mark GPU benchmarks cannot be used as surrogates for games is simply not true. These benchmarks are non-playable games that are designed and developed to test your GPU in exactly the same way that modern games do. Another comment that I see a lot is that it's unfair to test a higher end variant against a base model. The RTX 5070 Ti that I use in this video is essentially a base model from MSI with a very mild factory overclock of 30 MHz. When I compared this card recently against a Sapphire Nitro Plus Radeon RX 9070 XT, I received multiple comments saying that the comparison was unfair because the 9070 XT I tested was a higher end variant. But does it really matter? To answer this question, I decided to test the MSI Ventus 3X OC against what is arguably the best 5070 Ti on the market, the MSI Vanguard SOC. This card not only comes with a large factory overclock of 136 megahertz, but more importantly, it comes with a significantly higher max power limit of 350 watts, which is 50 watts higher than the Ventus 3X OC and 20 watts higher than its nearest competitor, the ASUS TUF OC card. If we compare the two 5070 Ti variants in 3D Mark Speedway, Port Royal and Steel Nomad, it becomes clear that at stock conditions, there is a meaningful increase in performance of around 6%, combined with a significant reduction in VRAM temperatures of around 15 degrees Celsius, which is impressive. However, when we compare the two cards with a max overclock applied, there is no meaningful difference in performance between the two cards, even with the Vanguard drawing significantly more power, which is interesting. These results suggest that the max performance of the Vanguard is voltage limited, whereas the Ventus is power limited. So the fact that it can match the performance of the Vanguard likely means it's better silicon. If we now compare the cards in a few games, we see the same trend continuing, with no meaningful difference in Total War Warhammer 3, a slight increase in performance in Cyberpunk 2077, and exactly the same average FPS in Call of Duty Black Ops 6. 
If you now consider the large 23% increase in price of the Vanguard over the Ventus, it's hard to justify buying the higher end variant, especially if you plan to overclock your GPU. Simply buy the cheapest option you can find and follow the steps outlined in this guide to extract max performance. Remember, it's not rocket science, it's Lego. My goal is to help you make the right component choices and put them together the right way every single time. Thank you for watching this video in the It's Not Rocket Science How To series. To celebrate hitting the 15,000 subscriber milestone, I'll be giving away an MSI GeForce RTX 5070 Ti Ventus 3X OC GPU to one lucky member, the exact card that was used in this video. I know how difficult it is at the moment to get your hands on a next-gen GPU, so hopefully this will help a member avoid the tariffs and be able to game on this amazing GPU. Details on how to enter are listed in the description below. Good luck and bye for now.